Father God and Mother. Are y'all excited about being at our Jesus party? Yeah. I am. Yeah. Oh my, I am so full. I am so full, I just don't know if I can do it in an hour or not. No, I'm just kidding. I have the timer going down here, so we'll get you out on time tonight. But I'm telling you what, I am so excited. Can y'all hear me okay? No echoing or anything? It sounds a little echoing to me, but that's okay. But anyhow, I'm so excited about what the Father has put in my heart to share with you tonight. Um, this theme of this conference is called, what? Does anybody know? Rainy and Life. That's so funny. Rainy and Life. Did you know that we were destined to reign in life? And rainy is living above, right? Above our circumstances. Above what other people think about us. Amen? Not living below it. We're not under. We're above. We're reigning in life in Jesus Christ. Amen? So the title of my message, I'm going to pray here in just a second before I get started. But the title of my message tonight is The Struggle is Over. You have the mind of Christ. Did you know that the struggle is right up in this mind of ours? But when you understand the struggle is over, oh my goodness, it is time to reign. All right? All right, I just want to pray real quick and then I'm going to get into the message tonight. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Oh, I thank you. For your word that brings life. I thank you that you have qualified and anointed me to preach the good news. Father, I acknowledge that you are the one that brings revelation. You have called me to bring forth a message. You have called me to bring, deliver the good news. But it's you who illuminates that good news. It's you who brings life to it. It's you who makes it revelation and understanding to come into the hearts and minds of your sons and your daughters to bring life to them. And I am trusting you tonight that as I speak forth, you will illuminate our minds with the truth that sets us free. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, the struggle is over. You have the mind of Christ. I'm going to start with Isaiah uh, Romans 5.17. That's our theme scripture for the weekend. Romans 5.17 says in the Amplified Bible. Is it up there? I want you to see these scriptures. There it, there it is. It says, For if, if because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace and the free gift of righteousness reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. It Does it say those who work really hard will reign in life? Does it say those who try really hard to keep the Ten Commandments will reign in life? Does it say those who uh, keep their list, their to-do list, their religious to-do list every day will reign in life? Does it say that? No. 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 What does it say? What does the scripture say? Those who receive, receive what? God's overflowing grace and his free gift of righteousness will reign in life through this one man, Jesus Christ. That's all we have to do is receive what our Father declares about us. That's all we have to do to reign in this life. I know, you know, I've, I've been in church my entire life. I'm 50 years old. I know I look 35, but I'm 50 years old. I've been in church my entire life. And I'm telling you what, I did not know the true gospel. I did not know it because I was trying to be righteous instead of receiving that I already was righteous. And when I was 25 years old and I was at the end of myself, 
at the end of trying, at the end of my struggle, I, my, my life was not what I had dreamed that it would be. Can anybody relate to that? Yeah. It was not what, it, what I dreamed for it to be. And I was a Christian, but I wasn't experiencing joy or peace or confidence. I was experiencing insecurity, worry, fear, worrying about what everybody thought of me. And I'm going to tell you what changed my life right now. And then I'm going to get into what I really want to share with you. What changed my life is embracing my true identity in Christ. No more struggling. I remember the Lord saying to me, Connie, no more trying. Your trying days are over. No more working on yourself. Your working on yourself days are over. Your struggle, Connie, is over when you embrace the identity that I have declared over you in Christ Jesus. And I remember that day that I embraced the identity that my father gave to me, I began to reign. My whole life began to change. Do you know when you reign as a king, just think about a king for just a second. What does a king do? A king? Right. How does he reign? He decides something. He decrees something. And it's established. That's how a king reigns. If you think about it in the natural, they decide something, they decree something, and you better believe what they decree is established. Well, our father has decided something about us. He has decreed something about us. And it has established in our lives. And you know what that is? We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. We are perfect in our Father's eyes. Amen. Righteousness means we are without fault in our Father's eyes. Righteousness means that you are approved, accepted in your Father's eyes. Righteousness means that all the promises of God are yes and amen in your life, not because of what you do, but because of what Jesus did. Yes. It is your identity. Like the song says, I am who he says I am. He is who he says he is. I'm defined by all his promises, shaped by every word he says. He has decided something about you. He has said, oh, how beautiful you are. And there is no flaw in you. He's decreed and it's established. It's the truth about Amen. you. Amen. Amen. So I want to go into this. This is so powerful. The Father has declared what about us? I'm going to skip one of my scriptures. I'm going to go to Romans 5, 8 through 9. If we can go there real quick. I want to show you what he's declared. But Christ proved God's passionate love for us by dying in our place while we were still lost and ungodly. And there is still much more to say of his unfailing love for us. For through the blood of Jesus, we have heard the powerful declaration of the king. You are now righteous in my sight. Are you a sinner? No. no. Are you righteous? Yes. yes. Was I taught I was a sinner my whole life when I was growing up in church? Yes, yes, yes. I was. Yes. I was taught I was a sinner. When I was righteous, yes. Jesus had made me righteous. Yes. And all people could do was point out what I needed to change, how I needed to be better, how my sins were, you know, needed to be worked on. And the answer for our reigning, the answer for triumphing over sin is embracing and receiving that you have been declared righteous by the King of Kings. Amen? Amen. So, I gotta tell you, just a second, let me get a drink of water here. What the King declares about you, it's all about identity, right? When we embrace our identity, and our identity, there's so many facets to it. You know, I am accepted, that's your identity. I am approved, that's your identity. I am beautiful, that's your identity. I am forgiven, that's your identity. I am qualified, that's your identity. It's your identity. You are defined by every promise, shaped by every word of the king. 
That's raining and loud, right? Mm -hmm. What I want to share with you tonight that has changed my life, I mean seriously, and I have heard this, I've taught it, I've believed it, I've said it, but it has went so down deep in my heart that I am exploding on the inside. And that is this, that we have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of of Christ. You're not trying to get his mind. You're not trying to change your mind. You're not working on renewing your mind. Now I know you're going to get upset with me with that. But I'm telling you what, when you think it's a work to renew your mind, you will struggle your whole life. When you start embracing that you have the mind of Christ, you will reign in this life. Because all the lies, all the doubts, all the struggles that we've ever experienced in our lives has come through the thoughts that have entered our minds. That we have believed lies about our identity. And when we believe those lies about our identity, it comes out in destruction in our lives. Relationships are destroyed. Self-image is destroyed. Um, health is destroyed. All because of the lies that are coming in from the enemy to tell us we're not who our father says we are. And so, when, okay, I'm, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm telling you what, when I had such an epiphany, is that a good word? I mean, yeah. such a like, whoa, Jesus, a couple of months ago. But before I tell you what happened to me, I want you to see this for yourself. I want you to say it with me right now. I have the mind of Christ. It will change your life. What does it say? He who receives his overflowing grace and free gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. In your righteousness package, identity package, is the mind of Christ. So he who receives the mind of Christ, he who receives, if they have the mind of Christ, will reign in this life. If you think you're still struggling with your thoughts and trying to, you know, I just can't think right, I just can't get it right, I just can't believe right, I have trouble understanding. If that's what you think about yourself, you're believing a lie. And it's keeping you in the cycle of the discouragement that you feel in your heart. But when you take the thoughts that are coming at you, that are not your thoughts. Yeah. 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 These are not your thoughts. Any negative thought that you have about yourself. Any negative thought you have about somebody else. Any negative thought you have about your future is not your thought. Yeah. It is coming in from the outside. Because the truth about you is you have the mind of Christ. I'm telling you what, this has the power to change your life. Can you feel it? Yes. Can you feel it? Okay, let's, let's, let's read it. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 16. This is why the scriptures say, Things never discovered or heard, or heard of before. Things beyond our ability to imagine. These are the many things God has in store for all his lovers. But God now unveils these profound realities to us by the Spirit. Yes, he has revealed to us his inmost heart. That word heart is thoughts. His inmost thoughts and mind, the way he thinks, the way he sees, the way he perceives. He has revealed it to us how? By his spirit. Mm -hmm. Does he reveal it to us by us trying to get our mind right? <laughs> no. I tried that. It doesn't work. You know, hearing the messages about how I need to change, you know, change the way I think, and you're like, well, there's scriptures that say that. Well, let me tell you something. Romans 12, 2. Let me just say it to you before we move on with the scripture. It's not in my notes. So this is an added one. <laughs> the New Living Translation. It says, let God transform you. 
by changing the way you think. Now, some people would think, oh, I need to change the way I think. No, no, let's, let's listen to it again. Let God transform you by God changing the way you think. By God changing the way you think. Yes! When you realize it's God who changes the way you think, then all you have to do is receive it. Lord, I thank you that I have your mind and you're changing the way I think. You, you are causing my thoughts to be agreeable to your will, and my plans are established and they succeed. Now, Proverbs 16.3 is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible because it tells us that it's God who causes our thoughts. Proverbs 16.3, and it's in my notes, but I'm getting way ahead of myself. And it says this, trust in the Lord. Commit your way to him. And he will cause your thoughts to be agreeable to his will. And your plans will be established and succeed. So I don't have to try to figure out God's will. I don't have to try to get my thoughts right. I already have right thoughts because I'm righteous. A righteous man has righteous thoughts because he has the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ has righteous thoughts. He causes our thoughts to be agreeable to his will. Okay, let's finish this passage of scripture. They're revealed to us. Oh, my goodness. Yes, he has revealed to us his inmost heart and deepest mysteries through the Holy Spirit, who constantly explores all things. After all, who can really see into a person's heart and know his hidden impulses except for that person's spirit? So it is with God. His thoughts and secrets are only fully understood by his spirit. The Spirit of God. For we did not receive the Spirit of this world system, but the Spirit of God, so that we might come to understand. Did you hear that? Come to understand and experience all that grace has lavished upon us. And we articulate these realities with the words imparted to us by the Spirit, and not with words taught by human wisdom. We join together spirit-revealed truths with spirit-revealed words. Verse 14, someone living on an entirely human level rejects the revelations of God's spirit, for they make no sense to him. He can't understand the revelations of the spirit because they are only discovered by the illumination of the spirit. Those who live in the spirit are able to carefully evaluate all things, and they are subject to the scrutiny of no one but God. Amen. Amen. For who has known or understood the mind, the counsels, the purposes of the Lord, so as to guide and instruct him and give him knowledge? But we have the mind of Christ, and you hold the thoughts of feelings, and purposes of his heart. Did you see that? We have the mind of Christ. Is that what your Bible says? Does it say try to get the mind of Christ? Does it say work really hard to have the mind of Christ? No. It says we have the mind of Christ. We hold the thoughts, the feelings, and purposes of of God's heart. That is our identity. Now I want to tell you something. A couple of months ago, this is when this dropped so deep in my heart, I was struggling in my mind. Remember I told you the struggle was over? <laughs> I was struggling in my mind. There was a situation happening in my family with my youngest daughter, Victoria, and my mind was going to the, what if this happens? What if that happens? And I know, I've been walking in grace for a long time. I know who I am in Christ. And I would say no to those thoughts because I know that when my heart 
feels discouraged or worried or anxious, but that is not the truth. The truth sets us free. Lies bring worry and fear and, and all of that in our hearts, right? And so I knew that that was not of God. And so I would, you know, talk to Jesus about it. And I was, you know, saying, you know, the promises of God. And I was, but it seemed like a struggle to me. It, it's like a few days went by and, and I was struggling. It was like I would speak the word of God and I would say what God says. And then the thoughts would just come right back. And, and it was like days I felt like this, this was just coming over me. And I was going under. It wasn't raining. Yeah. I was underneath these thoughts. And, and I know I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And so after a few days of this, I was just like, Jesus, I have been saying what you say. I have been asking you to help me. And I feel like I'm struggling with these thoughts of fear and concern. What if this? What if that? What if, you know, this happens? And what if they decide to do this and she decides to do that? And do you understand what I'm saying? Have you ever gotten the struggle of the what ifs? <laughs> it's hell. It's torment. Because fear brings torment. And so one day after a few days of this, back and forth, back and forth, I said, Father, what is up? I don't struggle like this. This is not my norm. My norm is to be confident and secure and, and know who I am and declare the word of God. That's how I live. What is the deal? And he spoke to me so strong in my heart, this scripture. And he said, Connie, you're struggling because you're not embracing that you have the mind of Christ. You're still trying to get your mind right. Mm -hmm. And I say, you have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. See, that's the identity that I needed to hear in that situation to break the power of those lying, deceptive thoughts that were coming at me. I am telling you, I embraced. It was like, Father, oh my goodness, I thank you. That I have the mind of Christ. I hold your thoughts, your feelings, and your purposes in this situation. I thank you for causing my thoughts to be agreeable to your will. And empowering me to walk this out in my life. And you know what he said to me? I mean, it's like a blood came up within me. Because when you embrace the mind of Christ, you know what manifests in your life? The mind of Christ. <laughs> when you receive that you have the mind of Christ, that's what manifests in your life. <laughs> and as I stood in my bedroom, in all of this revelation, because it was like I saw again. This was an identity issue. It had to do with my mind and my thoughts. And all of a sudden, this scripture that I had heard, that I had taught, that I thought, that I said my entire life, I was like, oh my goodness, I think I found a secret. <laughs> Because what happened to me as I embraced that one truth, this is the power of the word of God and identity. What came up within my heart was Connie. This was God's thought about my situation. He said, your husband has the mind of Christ. <laughs> Connie, he holds the thoughts and the feelings and purposes of my heart. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then he said, Connie, your daughter has the mind of Christ. She holds the thoughts and feelings and purposes of my heart. And I was like, oh my God! 
out. <laughs> this is the wisdom, the mind of Christ for my situation. What do I want more than anything? The mind of Christ. <laughs> my husband, my children, myself, to have the manifestation of the thoughts and the feelings and the purposes of God's heart toward themselves yeah. and toward each other. Yeah. I like blew up in the sky that day. <laughs> I was like, Father, I am telling you the struggle was over. For that situation in my life, the struggle was over. Now I'm not telling you that a thought didn't come to me again. Because the Bible says temptations will come. But he said, be of good cheer. I've overcome them for you. I've deprived every lying thought of any power to harm you. And so when the thought would come to me again, first of all, it wasn't a barrage. I had, you know what I'm saying? The scripture says, that when we're established and righteous, the thought of oppression will not come near us. Listen, I was under oppression for a few days because those thoughts were oppressing me. Even though I was coming up for air. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> but when I embraced what the Father spoke to me, the Spirit of God. See, I didn't have to, oh, I got to renew my mind. I got to renew my mind. I got to renew my mind. I didn't have to do that. The Spirit of God, just like the Scripture says, by the Spirit of God, illuminated my mind. And I could see my own self and my husband and my daughter through the mind of Christ. Not only that, but the Spirit of God empowered me to believe it. See, even your faith is not a struggle. You receive what the Father says about you, and the Spirit of God will bring forth the faith to walk that out and to believe it in your heart. That's grace. Grace. When I am weak, he makes me strong. That's grace. He, him exerting his holy influence upon what? Your mind. Turning your thoughts toward Jesus. Strengthening and increasing you in Christian virtues. That's what grace is. The mind of Christ is grace. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, but I just got to keep on touching. It's like I'm deciding to create an establishing right here. Reigning in life in the mind of Christ. Because I'm telling you what. This is where the enemy hits us. Right in this brain of ours. Right in these thoughts of ours. Fear of failure. Right? No, thank you. <laughs> but that's what he tells you, right? You can't get it right. You can't understand. You're not going to be able to explain anything. Yeah, you're, you're getting really a lot out of this conference, but you ain't going to be able to tell anybody about it because you can't explain it. <laughs> I mean, these are the thoughts that come to us. And when they do, if we will say, thank you, Father, that I have your mind. The mind of Christ. I hold your thoughts. I hold your feelings. And I hold your purposes in my heart. Amen. Now let me tell you something. Oh my goodness. I have been telling. <laughs> everybody who will listen. <laughs> about the mind of Christ. <laughs> and about how it's our identity. As, a, as righteous. As being righteous in Jesus. It's a gift. The mind of Christ is a gift. It's not something you earn, it's something you receive. So I was talking to my sweet Jessica. My Jessica's married to my oldest son, Justin. We went on a date on Sunday, this last Sunday. She asked me what I was going to teach this weekend, and boy, did she get a year full. <laughs> and I began to tell her, oh, Jessica, I said, I'm going to be talking about how our identity is that we have the mind of Christ. I said, did you know that the mind of Christ is never discouraged, mm -hmm. right. never depressed, right. never filled with anxiety or fear? 
Did you know that, Jessica? Good job, dude. I said, we have the mind of Christ, Jessica. Did you know the mind of Christ is never offended? Doesn't hold any, any of our sins against us? Doesn't hold anything against us? Did you know we have the mind of Christ, Jessica? She's like, wow. <laughs> you know? And I could feel as I was sharing with her about identity. And I told her, I told her, I said, Jessica, I said, I was struggling. I was struggling in my thoughts. And I said, and the Lord showed me that all I had to do was embrace what he said about my mind. I was struggling in my, what was I struggling in? My thoughts. When does the struggle end? When we embrace. That's right. Amen. Our identity right. in Christ. Yes. That's what it is. Yes. And she was just like, whoo. Yeah. <laughs> so anyhow, I didn't really know the impact that it made in her heart. I was just, blah, 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 you know. <laughs> you know, and, and I could feel her responding. She was responding. But let me say, she went on home that night. The next day, I get texts from her. I couldn't sleep last night. I was thinking about how I had the mind of Christ. <laughs> she said, Connie, she said, I've been struggling with these thoughts. Oh my God. Struggle? Yeah. You hear that word? Yeah. I've been struggling with these thoughts, she said, about my purpose. Yeah. Feeling like I wasn't doing enough, like I needed to do more. And she said, these thoughts are coming at me. She goes, all I did was say, Father, I thank you that I have the mind of Christ. And she said, Connie, up from within me, the illumination of God's spirit began to fill her mind with what was true about her purpose. And then she was just like, oh my goodness, Lord, show me more. Show me more. Simply by embracing this one thing, I have the mind of Christ. And my chest she, she began to say, she said, Connie, the Prince of Peace, the resurrected King, the, the one that walked upon the earth, the Son of God. She said, do you know how he had the mind of Christ? He was Christ, right? How did he have the mind of Christ, Connie? And I'm like, tell me more, just tell me more. She said, he asked the Father. Yeah. I asked the Father, Father, how do I have the mind of Christ? He said, you just asked me who you are. And I will show you. And she said, Connie, she said, when, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he was tempted, do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. With fear yeah. and anxiety was coming at his God. thoughts. Yeah. You know what Jesus said? Not my will. Sorry. Not my thoughts. Not my will. I surrender. I surrender. Father, it's your thoughts. Yeah. I have your thoughts. Yeah. I have your mind, Father. And you know what happened to Jesus? The illumination of the Spirit came up from within him. And he came out of that garden empowered to lay his life down for the sins of the entire world. Because he embraced his Father's mind. He embraced the mind of Christ. Listen to me. The struggle is over. Do you think the struggle was over with Jesus when he said, not my will, but yours would be done? Was the struggle over? Was he struggling before he embraced his identity in that moment? Yes, he was. And Jessica was saying, wow, this is a man who knew who he was, walked with God, walked with the Father, talked to God all the time, and yet he was still tempted. And how did he overcome? Embracing the identity that he has the Father's heart and the Father's thought and the Father's will. Yeah, yeah. Awesome! Yeah. I was like, wow, Jessica! <laughs> she began to teach me simply by embracing that she had the mind of Christ. It was really amazing because I had been talking to Roy said, Lord, this is too easy. That's what people tell me all the time. What you teach is too easy. I said, Lord, that was so easy. All I did, I mean, seriously had 
days of struggling in my mind. And the day that I embraced that, the struggle was over. I was, that's too easy. Does this work this well for everybody? <laughs> and when Jessica told me her story, the father answered my question. Mm -hmm. Jessica said to me, that's exactly what happened to her when she was laying in her bed, struggling with thoughts about her purpose. She embraced the mind of Christ and he took her down the path I just told you. Yeah. He showed her what it actually felt like to live in the mind of Christ. Wow. 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 The mind of Christ is our identity. It's your identity. And every label the enemy tries to put on you that you aren't smart, you can't do it, your dreams are never going to come true, uh, you're a failure, every lie that he brings to you I am telling you this. It's like this is what I've been walking in lately. Every negative thought. Is he, is the mind of Christ negative? No. 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 <laughs> the mind of Christ believes the best. Right up. Amen. 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 The mind of Christ believes the best. We have the mind of Christ. See, see if, if I was teaching you the law. If I was up here pointing you to yourself, I would be saying things like this. You need to work on renewing your mind. That's what I'd be telling you. You need to make sure that you are thinking correctly. That's what I'd be telling you. But that will never bring you victory until you embrace your identity that you already have. The mind of Christ. You're not trying to get it. I, I honestly believe the Lord gave me. I mean, do you know depression is rampant in our world? Did you know it's rampant in the church? Condemnation, shame, brokenness, rampant. Right? I'm telling you why. Because we don't know who we are. The devil has hoodwinked God's children into trying to do something. They already got. Yeah, right. And somebody they already are. Yeah, right. Negative yeah. thoughts are not your thoughts. Did you know that? Yeah, right. They are not your thoughts. I, I want to take you to... Oh, this is so powerful. Is this powerful? Yeah. This is so powerful. The Spirit of God, as I've been meditating on all, all this, He took me to a very familiar scripture. Very familiar. And it's the scripture that tells us, if you want to know something to do, you know, we're, we all like the do-do list, right? Even though the Lord doesn't want us to do the do-do list, we like it. Just tell me what to do. Just tell me what to do. Just tell me what to do. I mean, from the beginning of time, Adam and Eve, tell me what to do so that I can be like God, right? Well, the scripture says, above everything else. You want to know what it says to do? Above everything else? Proverbs 4.23. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Did you see that? Guard your heart above what? All else, for it determines the course of your life. Guard your heart above everything you do. When the negative thought comes, do you know what a negative thought feels like? Yeah, yeah. yeah we all do. We don't have to go to a school to know how, what a negative thought is. A negative thought makes you feel like crap. Okay? So, when that negative thought comes, how do you guard your heart? Father, I thank you that I have the mind of Christ. That I hold your thoughts, your feelings, and your purpose toward myself. Towards others, toward a person you may be having a struggle with. 
the struggle is over. over. When you embrace that you have the mind of Christ towards somebody you're struggling with, the victory has been won. Because your mind, the Holy Spirit, will begin to illuminate your thoughts about what is true about the person you're thinking about. Whether it's your, your spouse, your child, your friend, your pastor, somebody that's offended you. Spirit of God will begin to illuminate your mind. And you'll begin to think without any effort of your own. You'll begin to think the thoughts of God. Above everything you do. Why is it so important to, that we guard our heart? Because what comes into our mind becomes the belief of our heart, which becomes the words of our mouth, which manifest in our lives. So the only thing that we want going into this mind of ours is our identity. And that's that we have the mind of Christ. There's nothing wrong with your mind. I want you to say it right now. There's nothing wrong with my mind. Let's say it again. There's nothing wrong with my mind. Let's say it again. There's nothing wrong with my mind. I have. You have the mind of Christ. I'm putting this in the scripture, okay? Proverbs 4.10. My son, if you will take the time to stop and listen to me and embrace what I say. What did he say? You have the mind of Christ. He's telling you right now, if you will take the time. Did it take me time to stop and say, Father, what's the deal? Yeah. Yeah. Did I have to stop and listen to what the Father yeah. was speaking to me? Yeah. That's what the scripture says. My daughter, my son, if you will take the time to stop mm -hmm. and listen to me and embrace what I say, that you have the mind of Christ, what will happen? You will have a long and happy life. Full of understanding in every life. You will have the wisdom of God no matter when it comes to your body, whether it comes to your children, whether it comes to your business, whether it comes to your ministry, when it comes to you, when it comes to putting something together. You will have the mind of Christ. You will, your life will be full of understanding in every way. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I was trying to fix something, do something. I said, Father, I have the mind of Christ. I thank you that I have the mind of Christ because the mind of Christ is the wisdom of God. And he knows everything. We have the mind of Christ. And if we embrace what he says, we're going to have a happy life. Not a depressed life. Not a discouraged life, not a hopeless life, a happy life. My daughter, my son, if you will take the time to stop and listen to what I say, I am saying to you today, what's he saying to you today? You have the mind. you will embrace what I say, you will have a long and happy life Amen. full of understanding in every way. Amen. Proverbs 4, 20 through 23. My child, pay attention to my words. Listen carefully to what I say. Don't ever forget my words. What did he tell us today? Come on, tell me what he said. That's what he's telling you. This is what he's saying. This is the message he came for me to deliver to you. And it's right in the Bible. We have the mind of Christ. They are, keep 
Then always don't ever forget my word that you have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. Keep them always in mind. They are the key to life for those who find them. They bring health to the whole body. Be careful what you think because your thoughts run your now, again, I want to I wanna reinforce this. Now, come on. I know I've repeated myself a hundred times already. <laughs> but I'm not giving you a job to do. <laughs> I am telling you who you are. And I'm giving you the opportunity to embrace it. That's what I'm doing up here. I'm not telling you to go and work on your mind. I'm saying let Jesus do it. Let Jesus do it. When you're laying in your bed. And thoughts are coming at you. And you're worried about your husband, about your children, about your business, about your finances. When anxious thoughts are coming to your head and you're like, I don't know what to do. Say, Father, I thank you that I have the mind of Christ. That you've given it to me as my identity. I hold your thoughts, your feelings, and your purposes in this situation. And let him illuminate The peace that passes all understanding. The joy that overflows. The love that never fails. Because that is the mind of Christ. Isn't this good preaching, Mama? <laughs> Listen to this. I want you to get a hold of this. This is something that I think, I mean, I understood, but it's just going so deep in me. Negative, and I said it already, but the Lord wants me to bring this home. Negative thoughts are not your thoughts. Because if you will grab hold of that, that they're not your thoughts, they will never be able to shame you. They will never be able to make you feel guilty. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you think these are negative, evil thoughts that come into your mind or your thoughts, you'll think you're bad. But if you know that you have the mind of Christ and every negative thought is from the enemy, you will be empowered to reign in this life. I'm telling you what, let's say it. I don't want you to forget it. Negative thoughts, let's say it, Negative thoughts are, not my thoughts. are not my thoughts. I have the I mind have of Christ. Christ. Woo! 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 Listen to this. I'm, I'm bringing this home here. Second Corinthians 11, 2 through 4. You need to know that God's passion is burning inside me for you. That's what I feel. Can you feel my burning passion? Yeah. This was the Apostle Paul, but I am relating to him right now. Yeah. He was a minister of the gospel, the good news. Yeah. And he says, I have a burning passion yeah. within me right now. I've got something to say to you. Listen. <laughs> because like a loving father or a loving mother, I have pledged your hand in marriage to Christ, yeah. the true bridegroom. I promised that I would present his fiance to him as a pure virgin bride. But now I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's clever lies, your thoughts may be corrupted and you may lose your single-hearted devotion and pure love for Christ. See? Where's the thoughts coming from? Are they your thoughts? No. no. They are intended to corrupt yeah. your mind. That's right. His clever lies are intended to corrupt your mind. What's the answer to this? I have the mind of Christ. Well, Paul, you got it. You won. Big plus for you. It's just, it's amazing how simple the gospel is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm telling you what, the main thing people will say about me, come against me for my messages, that can't be that easy. Can't be that simple. It is. This very scripture in the New King James Version, if you're a New King James person, says that I fear 
that the enemy would corrupt your mind from the simplicity yeah. that is in Christ Jesus. Yeah. If you don't think it's simple, the enemy has corrupted your mind. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. How do you reign over every lie the enemy tries to bring to your mind? Thank you, Father. I have the mind of Christ. You've given me your thoughts, your feelings, and your purposes in this world. Imagine, imagine walking around in a world where people's minds are manifested inside their head, the mind of Christ. Imagine that, because that's the life that Jesus came to give us. That's the life. He did not come to give us a depressed, discouraging, hopeless, fearful, anxiety-filled, broken heart. He came to heal the broken heart and to set the captives free. And how was he going to do that? Establish you in your identity. Because that's what it says. I will turn your ashes into beauty. I will turn your mourning into joy. I will turn your despair into songs of praise. Yeah. How is he going to do that? The next verse says this. By establishing you as an oak of righteousness. By telling you who you really are. And you embracing what I say about you. And I say you have the mind of Christ. You hold the thoughts the feelings and the purposes of God's heart towards yourself. Yes. You don't think about yourself the way you think about you. You know what I'm saying? It's, oh, I gotta tell you this. Oh my goodness, is my time running out? Eight minutes. Oh dear Lord. Okay. I have my Christ. Thank you, Sherry. Isaiah 55. Listen to me. This is the scripture will the enemy will use. Did you know he uses scriptures? Did you know he used scriptures against Jesus? He's going to use scriptures against you. In Isaiah 55, you've heard it your whole Christian life. And it says this. My thoughts are not your thoughts. And my ways are not your ways, saith the Lord. And we've been quoting that for 50 years. But do you know, if you go read that scripture, go read it. It's Isaiah 55. You go read it tonight because this is what he's saying. He's talking to the unrighteous. Yes. Let me read it to you. You ready? you ready for this, girls? Don't ever say that about yourself again. You are not unrighteous. You are not wicked. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And your thoughts are his thoughts. And your ways are his ways. By the by the power of the Spirit of God. This is how the Spirit of, yeah. of the Holy Spirit comes out in our lives by us embracing yeah. the truth. And then the enemy comes and takes the scripture out of context, tells us we can't think like God. Yeah. Listen to this, okay? Isaiah 55, verse 7. Let the wicked <laughs> forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Who's he talking about? The wicked and the unrighteous. Okay. And let him return to the Lord. Yeah. And he will have love and mercy for him, saith the Lord. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Who's he talking to? The wicked and the unrighteous. Are you wicked and unrighteous? So don't ever say that about yourself again. <laughs> When somebody tries to quote that, say, did you know that's talking about the unrighteous and we're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? And we have the mind of Christ. We hold his thoughts, feelings, and purposes of his heart. Can you imagine? Wow. That you would really experience life when you embrace that you have the mind of Christ. The last verse. Wow. Five minutes. There's those praise and worship people are supposed to be coming up here. Maybe give me a few more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Ephesians, Galatians 2:20. This is my last verse. I love this. this. Is my last point. 
Embrace the mind of Christ, for you've been resurrected into a brand new life. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. Embrace the mind of Christ, because you've been resurrected into a brand new life. And this life that you have in Jesus does not include negative thoughts. It's not in your salvation package. Negative thoughts are not in your salvation package. Depression, hopelessness, discouragement, fear, offense, jealousy, envy, not in it. It's not who we are. I'm telling you what, this has the power to heal marriage. Could you imagine if you're struggling in your marriage and every time the enemy tried to bring a, a thought to you to corrupt your mind about your thoughts towards your husband or your wife. And you said, Father, I thank you that I hold your thoughts and your feelings and your purpose toward my husband. And I thank you that he holds your thoughts and feelings and purposes. Could you imagine if you lived above all else guarding every negative thought you had about yourself, about your spouse, and you began to embrace this truth that has the power to change your life. Can you feel it? Yes. Did I tell you we're having a Jesus party this week? <laughs> you all are going to be flying like high on a kite. There ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because the Holy Ghost party don't stop. <laughs> there ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because the Holy Ghost party don't stop. You know, you go to drugs, it takes you high and it takes you low. It takes you high, go to alcohol, it takes you high, and then it takes you low. You go to sex outside of marriage, it takes you high, then it takes you low. But you go to Jesus. You go to Jesus. And you embrace that you've been resurrected into a brand new life. Because you have the mind of Christ. And you will fly high as a kite. Of your life. Alright, Galatians 2 20, we're done here. My old identity woo, has been co crucified with Messiah and no longer lives. For the nails of his cross crucified me with him. And now the essence of his this new life is no longer mine, for the anointed one lives his life through me. We live in union as one. My new life is empowered by the faith of the Son of God, who loves me so much that he gave himself for me. And he dispenses his life into mine. My old identity, the one that was suppressed, that woman who was discouraged, that woman that was hopeless, that woman who was filled with shame, she died with Christ. And she rose to a brand new life. Yeah. For the one who loves us dispenses his life into us. This is not something we're trying to attain. This is not something we're trying to be. This is a gift of life that's been given to you and me. When Jesus rose up from the dead, he secured your righteousness forever. And now you can think right.
fight for the rest Amen. of your life. Yeah. You can think right because you have a righteous mind. You hold the thoughts and the feelings and the purposes of God's heart for every area of your life. He'll do it in you. You know what? I'm going to tell you something. The Lord said to me, he said, I mean, I said to him, I said, Lord, I have so much to teach. I got to go tell him what your mind is like, how you think, what you believe. I have to tell him all this for them to understand what that means that they have the mind of Christ. And he said, oh, no. Oh, no. He said, they will simply both embrace what I am telling you to tell them. I will show them my mind. I will teach them like no man can teach them. I will show them like no teacher can teach them. Because the new covenant says you don't need another person to teach you. You got the spirit of God inside of you. And all you have to do is say thank you Father that I have the mind of Christ. I hold your thoughts. I hold your feelings. I hold your purposes toward me and toward the world. I see like you. I feel like you. I hear like you. I speak like you. I am one with you. I've been resurrected into a brand new life. It's so like you. And so, did you know that we're ministers of reconciliation? And so the scripture said, for me to come as Christ's ambassador, and I'm here today to tell you that the Father has reconciled you to himself. He has given you his righteousness. And now he's saying, be reconciled to me. You know what that means? Embrace what I say about you. And so I plead with you today. Just like the scriptures say, the Spirit of God is pleading through me. Be reconciled in this area of your life that you have the mind of Christ. Don't let anybody tell you there's something wrong with your mind. Don't let the enemy tell you that you can't understand. Don't let him tell you that you just can't get it. And don't let him tell you that you just can't love like Jesus. Because it's a lie. You have the mind of Christ. That's your identity. Embrace it. So let's do it right now. Heavenly Father, repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you that I've been resurrected into a brand new life. And you've given me the mind. Negative thoughts are not my thoughts. Your thoughts are my thoughts. And your ways are my ways. Because I am one with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to have a time of ministry right now. If the prayer team and the ministry team, uh, the prophetic team will come forward. <laughs> I'm going to hand this over to you.